Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a review of Zeta 2. This is actually Zeta 2.1 and I got it kind of recently. Um, if you're like me, you might have a lot of different synthesizers and even though synthesizers for me are just really fun and, and you know, I, I'd have them all, I think at some level if I could, but you know, you want to be productive and um if you have too many cents you're, you're just going to get confused and you're, you're going to have too many resources and you're not going to be able to be effective in what you're trying to do um so you know is this a good buy if you already have some other synths like um if you have a rapture for instance also by cakewalk or if you have um massive or some other synths like that is it is there any point to getting this and uh, yeah, I think there is a point to it, but let me get into some of the specifics. What I really like about this synth is the editability of the um, waveform. And there's a lot of uh, wavetable synths out there, but I've not seen anyone else give you this sort of morphability, being able to move the waveform and reshape it very easily. And to be able to come in and apply all these different sorts of effects to the waveform. And uh, this isn't really changing the sound very much because it's kind of, it's got like the, all these different waveforms going on. But you can really get a wide variety of sounds, although they all sound, to me, they have a very kind of electro mechanical sound. Um, uh, well, they don't all. There's a there's a very large variety, but this synth is capable of doing some sounds that kind of remind me of, uh, you know, the hum of a of a TV or, or some electronic device or some kind of electric mechanical e device, kind of a nice little buzz and hum and that sort of stuff. And I like that kind of sound. So that, so that makes a lot of sense uh, for me to have this. Um, it comes with a good variety of different sounds and um, they're fun. Now, there are some shortcomings to this. I love, again, like I said, I love the power of being able to reshape these waveforms. But it should be said that reshaping these waveforms, even though you can get some variety, it's not super obvious what you're going to get when you start messing with this stuff. And let me just kind of give you a quick little demonstration. I can clear out this, um, initialize it, and then put up a sawtooth. So now we have this sawtooth sound. And then I can come in and change this wave. And that one's pretty linear. But when I come in and change some other things like twist, it's not what I call linear. In other words, if you're dealing with a filter, if I take a you know nice low pass filter and um, route the sound through there, it gives me a continuously changing sound that's predictable and it doesn't give me any surprises in the middle of that travel. But with some of the wave shaping, as you can hear here, it, it like kind of clicks and it does weird things in the middle of that travel. So what that basically means is just that you, if you, you might not be able to say, okay, if I want this particular sound, let me turn up the twist. Let me turn up this and do that and I'll get what I want. You're really experimenting and, and within a throw of one of these things, you might get something unexpected. Um, so it is powerful, but you're not going to be able to do something like simulate a piano sound or something like that with this sort of technology. But you can make a, a big variety of, of buzzes or things that sound like something's wrong with a machine or just weirdness, just fun, crazy weirdness. And you can modulate each one of these uh, wave shapers with the LFOs, with the envelopes. Um, 
And so you can have sounds that continuously morph and shift and evolve and throb and stuff like that. So because of this section here, because of this oscillator section, this synth is unique. I don't know of any other synth that can do what this synth can do. So as far as extending your palette, I would say yes, this synth does extend your palette. It gives you some unique sounds. It's not gonna give you sounds that you'll say, wow, I've never heard anything like that before so much. Um, maybe there's a few exceptions like that, but on the whole, it's not going to give you earth shatteringly different sounds. And we have so much synth power these days that I don't know if you could say that about any synth really. But what you can say about this guy is, especially if you're coming in to try to do some sound design, it does offer you something unique and powerful. Now what I don't like about this synth is there's not a huge variety of filters here. Um, the filters are decent, but there's not a huge variety of them. They do have some scream and some squelch to them if you pick the right ones. Um, but this right here is a format, format fits filter. And I think it's ridiculous because it is quantized. It, it only, it doesn't give me a continuous shift. So I can't like make kind of IO IO sounds at least by using this format filter, which I think is crazy. Why did they not uh, give us that feature? That's kind of crazy. Also, um, the, the choices here, like for instance, the, the, um, envelope section, it doesn't give you, you know, kind of infinite stage envelopes that you can kind of sequence, make kind of sequence types envelopes that you have in some other synths. These are just basic envelopes. You get uh, six of them. Well, you get eight of them, but two of them are hardwired. Um, and so, I mean, you know, that's, that's pretty good, but there's a lot of synths these days that give you much more complicated filter, um, I'm sorry, envelopes. And um, the LFO section is pretty cool. You can morph in between diff two different shapes of LFOs and um, switch between them. You can modulate that the switching between them, I believe. And that's kind of cool. Um, and, and it has an arpeggiator which is maybe not the most flexible one that I've seen. I, I like the one in FM8 a lot more than this one, but it works. Um, and this modulation section here is good for, I don't know, maybe like eight years ago or something. But nowadays we have some other synths. Like if I compare it to one like uh, Alchemy here, in Alchemy, when you want to modulate something, you, you can pretty easily get around, for instance, if I want to modulate this uh, pan by an LFO, I click here and I say add LFO, I create a new one, it takes me here, and I can set the rate and the phase and it's done. Now it's, pan, you know, here you have to go into a new channel here in, in the matrix and you pick what the destination is or the source, which I would go LFO number, yeah, whatever, number five. I, I set up the amount. And then I come over here and I choose what thing I want to modulate. So then I have to go in here and find which oscillator and then find what part and then do that. So, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's a, it's more confusing and it's, it's not as intuitive because I have to go through these long lists uh, here to, for my destination. Whereas in a synth like this, I just go to the parameter I wanna modulate and I just click right on it. So I've already done half the job by just being where I wanna be. So while this is definitely not the worst modulation section I've ever seen, it it, it could be easier and, and I think, um, that's kind of the standard um, nowadays. Uh, Massive has kind of a drag and drop routing thing going on. So it's, it's not the best there. Um, the effects section is, is, is fairly cool. You can reroute the, um, the, the flow of things, um, the, the sequence of, of effects, and that, that is pretty cool. 
and you get um, a good a good variety of things to mess with here. So all in all, I say it's good. Um, what really makes it shine, what really makes it different and unique is that you can modulate these single cycle waveforms. So it's going to be good for sound design. You're going to be able to easily do things here that are either going to be very difficult or impossible in other sense. The rest of it is fairly pedestrian, fairly, you know, stuff that you'll find in a lot of different synths. Uh, is it worth it? Yeah, I think so, because for what it does, it is fairly easy to program. It is, it does have this unique oscillator section and it gives you plenty of oscillators. Um, so it's, it's a fun thing to have. Would, would I recommend you get it if you already have something like Massive or, um, even like uh, FM8 or even Alchemy or, you know, a bunch of other synths. Um, hey, if you can afford it, yeah, go ahead, buy it. Why not? It's, and if, if you already have something like Cakewalk, um, Sonar, you can get it for 50 bucks. If not, it's a hundred bucks. Um, so depending on how much you kind of like the sounds that this thing does, uh, you, you might want to go ahead and drop that money on it. Um, but as far as like, you know, where you want to spend a hundred bucks, should you spend it on this rather than something else? Again, I recommend like get the demo, see if you really like the sounds it does. I do like the sounds that it makes and I like this oscillator section. So I, well, I actually paid, um, um, 30 bucks for it because I had a coupon and I already have uh, sonar so I could get the upgrade. Um, but I did pay some money for it. Would I have paid a hundred? I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm rambling now. Um, but yeah, so this is Zeta two. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, why not get it? But it's not imperative. All right. That's it guys. Thanks.